Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and this is going to be a really interesting video. So we took part in ICPA Season 4, and uh, by the time this is being released, I imagine that it'll be announced somewhere on Twitter that uh, we will be taking part in ICPA Season 5. Our team is already drafted, and we will be coming out with battles really, really soon. But last season, I was going through a lot, and the end of my season was really, really mixed. So uh, we did make playoffs, but... Uh, the last kind of four weeks of the season just kind of fell off, and there are a lot of reasons for that. I was uh, late in uploading videos, there was a lot going on personally that made me somewhat demotivated to uh, upload, and a lot of different things happened. So basically, to, to recap the end of the season, and I believe like the last five weeks of the season, we did play our week six against Spanik and his New York Rangers. Uh, we had to play it on Showdown, unfortunately, and he uh, 6 0 me straight up with a Z move Glade, but it was a Sata Z move, and we found out later that that was illegal. So he basically felt really bad about that, and uh, he felt like he didn't deserve the win. So he decided that even if we did um, beat him in the standings, that he was going to give up his playoff spot. And uh, fortunately, we did end up with a natural playoff spot. But uh, regardless, we would have gotten that very final seed in the end. But we would have gotten some type of playoff contention regardless. And then after that, uh, we did play Goldoa Dragon and uh, Johnny GB in back-to-back -back weeks 4, 7, and 8. And I do have those replays. I want to go through those. But uh, after that happened, the final two weeks of the season were uh, forfeit losses. I believe those two final teams might have dropped out or something to that effect. I don't quite remember, but, uh, basically the final two weeks were forfeit wins for us. So we ended up kind of just double, triple securing our playoff spot between one member conceding, uh, and getting two forfeits that pretty much, uh, helped us out with seeding. But that does leave me with two, uh, recordings here. Our match with Godoa Dragon and Johnny GB, which were never live recorded for whatever reason, but there was a lot going on where my heart just wasn't in it and I couldn't, uh, force myself to live record these. Regardless, uh, I think it'd be fun just to cap off the season with, uh, these final two matches and, and a minor run in the playoffs. I mean, spoiler alert, you guys should know, I, I would imagine if you follow the ICBA that Goldoa Dragon did end up winning the entire thing, but I do have somewhat of a playoff run to, uh, show off. So I want to finish off the season with these two, um, recordings and then our final playoff match and that'll cap off the season. Hopefully, uh, the playlist will be considered complete on the ICBA season four run and that'll lead directly into an ICBA season five week one, uh, in at most two weeks from now. But, uh, I want to get right into this match. This was my first time playing Goldoa Dragon and I was pretty excited about it. Uh, he's a good guy from all that I've from all the discussions that I've had with him in discords and uh even now this is months later after I after I've met him and and uh had this match but uh still a very nice guy uh very knowledgeable guy and uh here we go I lead off with my Electros right as he leads off with his Arambi I I I really do love Electros I feel like Electros is such a good uh catch-all lead and can just pivot out can be a nuisance I really do love Electros to death I think Electros is fantastic but uh he goes for the u-turn i'd be surprised if i didn't u-turn oh i just go straight off for a thunderbolt that is surprising but i guess i wanted some type of damage i guess i wanted to prevent him from trying to uh quiver dance up uh i do remember very little about this match but uh the very little that i do remember uh i'm gonna i remember very strongly uh regardless sorry about that regardless he's gonna make you off straight away he's gonna drain punch i believe yeah i i of course built this thing to be max defense uh generally speaking i've always built my electrons to be max defense or max special defense i just feel like it's such a good um defensive check to so many different things and uh this does let me pivot out um because this thing still does have base 115 attack and can hit hard with u-turns on its own but now this allows me to go into my infernape and it's pretty obvious from the way that i switched it in that this infernape is scarf but i really didn't have any other uh options here as uh he is able to bring in his feeny i would imagine that i u-turn here no i just go straight in for a flare blitz all right so i was feeling pretty spicy i guess but uh there was no way he was staying in realistically um actually no was i bluffing the scarf i think i was bluffing the scarf in this situation I think I might have been bluffing the scarf in this situation. Regardless, uh, no, okay, so if, if I am bluffing the scarf, I bluff it for a little while longer. As I bring on the Blastoise, Blastoise is a fantastic mod. I, I loved Blastoise to death uh, after my experience using it uh, in the ICBA. And uh, I just take a Moonblast relatively easily. And 
I don't know why I brought it in. Like, I obviously can't talk to this Feeny, and uh, I pull a double. So maybe I'm expecting him to try to position off of this or maybe i brought it in attempting to toxic and uh realizing that how dumb that was but regardless um this does allow me to very freely go into my uh electros which is not a great move on my part because this is very clearly just allowing him uh to kind of break this easier with galade at some point and this thing being built so physically defensively that uh that it's not a good idea at all but uh regardless uh, I let this thing go down. This is clearly a sack. I don't think I ever expected this to take two moon, two moon blasts uh, or two skulls or whatever the heck uh, he was going to do. But uh, I do bring in my Celebi. I have to imagine that this is a a uh, an attempt to scare him out as I do go for a U-turn. I have to imagine. If I go for Giga Drain, then I am on some other nonsense here. Oh, no. I set up Stealth Rocks. Okay. That's, I guess, a fair play. Um, although, I did pretty freely let him bring in the Rabombi, which uh, is pretty concerning on my part. I don't know why uh, I did that so brazenly, but I imagine I go into Blist. No, I go into... Um, oh, yeah, no. I think I calc this out. I, I, I do remember calcing this out, and I remember um, being able to reasonably take a a hit from this thing. I think uh, I take a Moon Blast from this thing, so it made me feel confident enough that I could bring this thing in. And uh, I am either scarfed or bluffing scarf aggressively here still. So uh, I might even just go for a U-turn. I'm pretty positive I go for a U-turn in this situation. I finally learned my lesson not to flare blitz when he has a freaking uh, Fanny in the back. I do remember this sequence in particular. This is uh, one of these moments that I do very uh, particularly remember because this does allow me to U-turn into my Greninja um, that I will always name T'Challa. There is no better name for a gosh dang Greninja, but... I remember this sequence very vividly because uh, he is at around 80-ish percent and I did so many calcs trying to figure out if Protein Greninja would take this thing out and uh, it turns out that my chances of taking this thing out are very good at the range that it's at but I miss but I didn't even think about this right the fact that it turned me into a poison type allows me to take a moon blast reasonably well which uh, allows me to stay in and be able to try to gunk shot again so I'm, at this point he knows that I want a gunk shot so I I think I, I have to imagine I make... Oh, yeah, no. I expected him to want to play off the fact that I would want a gunk shot, that, I'm, that I proved that I want a gunk shot against this thing, so I go for a Dark Pulse because I expected him to want to switch in something, and I felt really proud of myself because I uh, called this uh, correctly. He could have gone into his Landorus, and I really debated trying to Ice Beam as well, but uh, realistically, that's not a play that he would want to make too, too many times, but... Um, at this point, he tries to bring in his Rabombi now. I'm weak to uh, being a, dark, a pure Dark Dragon now. Uh, after the Dark Pulse, I am weak to Moon Blast, Bug Buzz, whatever he wants to do. And again, this is a moment where I am calculating out um, a Moon Blast damage. And I know that my Infernape can take a Flare Blitz, can take a Moon Blast reasonably well. So I go into my Infernape, but he reveals a Twinkle Tackle. And uh, whatever chances I had to take this are out the window because... Uh, this Rabombi is going to hit me reasonably hard, and uh, it puts me in a really awkward position here. Um, but I do feel reasonably confident that my Blastoise can 1v1 this thing, even though it's not my ideal situation, obviously. Um, so I guess I'll never know whether or not I was bluffing Scarf on my Infernape. I have to imagine that I was actually Scarfed, because me trying to bluff Scarf that aggressively is kind of wild, but... Uh, yeah, I don't even know. Um, uh, I go for Scald as he has his obvious play into Feeny. But um, I don't know what I do. I might aggressively go into Greninja again. Do I? Is that what I do? No, okay. I go into. I, I, I at least make the play to go into um, this thing first. As he goes into. As he goes for the Defog. Um, but now this is an interesting turn, turn because. I'm curious as to whether or not I U-turn here, expecting him to expect me to withdraw, or if I Giga Drain, expecting him to expect me to, you, know, you guys know. Um, I might just go, oh, I go for a Toxic, oh yeah, no, because, uh, th that makes sense, because I did, um, allow the terrain to expire, so I am able to get a Toxic, that's, that makes sense, good job, me. I've, I've, I feel like that's a reasonably optimal play, but he does go for a knockoff, 
and I knew that I I I built this um I built this Celebi to take on this Glade. This is a max defense Celebi, and he's finding that out now. And now a second knockoff is not going to do nearly uh, that that much damage. And so now I'm I I feel like I'm reasonably free to just uh, recover up again. Uh, not even trying to worry about dealing damage to this thing because this thing is already toxic. So as long as I can um, uh, keep pace by recovering up as oh, toxic is whittling him down then that's going to put me in the best position overall. I, I might even try to recover up again, even if he does want to switch out, right? Um, I do have the ability to be up at full to be able to take on uh, his next mon. But yeah, that's exactly what happens. Um, I would guess that I go into Blastoise again. Now, I was talking before about... No, I, I tried to call his bluff, I guess. I don't know what I do. Maybe I was going for a U-turn? I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of a wild one on my part. I made some aggressive play right there. I really should have just gone into uh, 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 Blastoise because I'm sure I put Roar on Blastoise. There's no doubt in my mind that I put Roar on Blastoise. But regardless, uh, he's going to take this opportunity. Uh, oh, yeah, no, because I think at this point I was playing with Shuriken uh, turns. And, if, and I believe if I got like three rounds of Shuriken, then I take out that um, Rabombi from half, which is... For a very particular reason that I wanted to um, get those, uh, st keep those stealth rocks up, and I went pretty aggressively for those stealth rocks when I was one one on one with that, um, with that, uh, with that uh, Gallade. But now I absolutely have to switch out here. Uh, to, he goes for a wish. Oh yeah, no. Now this is coming back to me as well, but. Uh, this is a more, a slightly more supportive, um, uh, Jolteon, and I believe I'm a Scarfed, uh, Flygon here, and I believe I would go for a U-turn in this situation. I would be amazed if I go for e Earthquake straight up, even though, uh, I am Scarfed in this situation. Yeah, okay, there it is. I think I had to play off the fact that, uh, he would, he would, uh, not want to stay in assuming whatever the case is but now i'm in a position again where now this thing's at full right but a uh, protein gunk shot still has a chance to take this thing out i still have a chance a really solid chance and i miss again as he's able to go for a surf um i think he knows that that moon blasting that surf is going to be better than moon blasting the situation because i'm going to want to make myself a poison type but um but uh he ends up switching out before I can do anything. Now, this is another situation. I was so certain. I was so certain that he was going to bring in the Landorus. The same way that he brought in the Chandelure before. And I came so very close to clicking Ice ice Beam. But I click on Shot and I hit it on the third chance on the uh, Landorus. But I 100% knew that this Landorus was going to come in. And I knew that I wanted to click Ice Beam. But I couldn't bring myself to actually click Ice Beam. And that... Oh man, that one hurt me for a while. That one genuinely did hurt me because, uh, I mean, look, I, I, I can get it that I lost after um, missing those gunk shots, but I was super upset about uh, getting that differential point. I, like, after I missed that second gunk shot, I was dejected. I was, like, down on the dumps, like, bottom of the barrel, like, just feeling bad about myself. But, uh, <laughs> but... Uh, not looking back on it, it's fine, whatever. But, I really did, I genuinely did want to feel like I should be in that situation. And at this point, the match is over. But at this point, I'm trying to uh, get myself back some differential, obviously. Uh, he, he's able to give me his Rebombi because uh, my Blastoise is a decent check to it. And he doesn't want to bring in the uh, Landorus in on this thing. And uh, he does have the Landorus and the... Yeah, he does have a couple things left in the back. And now, here's another moment where we, we have to play some mind games because uh, he clicked Wish before, so he thinks that I can go into my Flygon again, but I end up staying in with this thing because I expected this thing to... I expected him to want to expect me to bring in my Flygon in this moment, and I believe on this next turn, I play off that again, and I actually do go into my Flygon as he does go for a Thunderbolt. If I'm not mistaken... Although, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, we'll see. I believe he goes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I baited this out as much as I could. And uh, he knows, he has to know that I'm scarfed at this point. He has to. 
but he does go for thin power ice i really did uh want to go back into my uh blastoise but at this point i, f I knew that uh all the switching wasn't going to result in much so this match was over uh honestly it was probably over after i missed the first gunk shot but it was a uh, thousand percent over once i missed the second gunk shot and uh at this point he can just uh end this match um with a pretty pretty strong win on koto dragon's part but uh this was a really tough loss for me because i really did think that i had the tools to win and uh missing those two gunk shots really did hurt like i like it would like I, I wouldn't even call it being put on tilt but uh it was just being like sad i was just like upset i was depressed at that point um but now ultimately it's it's fine great game to godoa he played uh really well i tried to play as well as i could against um godoa but ultimately what happened happened and that's going to be the godoa match and actually here we have the match against johnny gb and uh you can see this this time i brought a lot of mons that i would not normally bring but i just wanted to uh build something crazy this week i guess i did bring this hype null i believe this might be one of i could not have brought the type null more than like twice the entire season i don't think i really don't think i did but uh i also bring in the guard of war here which i brought maybe a couple times as well but uh we do have the my personal favorites uh that greninja infernape core I call it a core. It's not a core, but uh, just two mods that I really like to have together. Um, with the Blastoise and the Electrons, these are two mods that I absolutely adore, especially after this season. But uh, this is a match that I remember even less, so I'm just going to get into this one. But, um, oh my god, I'm actually literally remembering in real time how this match ended, and uh, that's that's kind of wild. I'm, I'm remembering now how it ended, and uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny, but regardless... He leads off with Drapion. Um, so uh, obviously I led wrong. I this is real bad for me, right? Um, I really did kind of expect him. Oh yeah, no, this is a Mega Gardevoir. So I don't. I usually didn't even bring Mega Gardevoir that often, but uh, I inherited this team after week one. So somebody else drafted this team, and uh, Mega Gardevoir was not a Mega. That sorry about that. Mega Gardevoir is not something that I would normally draft. But uh, the draft was so uh, all over the place that literally the only like reasonable fairy type that I was in a position to pick up was Mega Gardevoir. Uh, so ultimately, that that's what I did. Uh, this Drapion gets some minor damage with knockoff after being burned. But uh, apparently, I did prep for this particular lead matchup if it did happen with the whole Will-O-Wisp interaction. But uh, he does get his um toxic spikes up no matter what i did i don't think i was able you ever able to prevent that unless i brought um unless i brought uh taunt or something like that but uh i think these toxic spikes are gonna be up to stay for most of this match and uh he goes for the sludge wave and i believe i believe i built this uh gardevoir super specially defensively in order to be able to take this because i don't I, there's no other reason for me to want to stay in in that situation and i was so happy that i got poisoned because it did uh allow me to get taken out and not have to uh give him the beast boost but i'm i'm remembering now i believe i super specifically built my guard to be able to take a sludge wave from this noggin adele and i am kind of proud of myself for that interaction now if only i fucking brought a psychic move on my I, I apparently didn't have a psychic move so i'm an idiot for that but uh good on me from building that uh as 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 well as i did but uh <coughs> he's able to bring in the slow king on my um type null but at this point my type null is just trying to be a nuisance i'm able to get a toxic off on uh this slow king if, if anything this might open him up to get a toxic off on me i don't remember anything about this slow king set uh goes for calm mind so maybe toxic uh, stops him for a bit but uh yeah this is i don't remember anything about this type null set i probably just built it super specially defensively to take on the noggin adele maybe he had some physical threat that i wanted to build defensively for but uh regardless i at least had toxic and u-turn so that's what i do for the time being i got a decent amount off with the uh, U turn and uh, Toxic is going to be taking its toll as I do bring in the Blastoise. Blastoise is going to be probably my best check to this thing, other than the 
other than the um, type null, but I am letting these talk these uh, poisons get spread around on my team, which is super unfortunate. I super do not like this at all, but uh, I don't really feel like I have any other plays at this point. If I can just, I'm kind of put in a position where I have to uh, let this thing whittle itself down to its own toxic because I really don't have a good way of dealing with this thing offensively. Except I do dragon tail it out, so uh, what for whatever that's worth. I guess I was super afraid of it, of it call mining up some more. I don't know what I was doing, but regardless, it does it does get dragon tailed out and uh. It brings it brings in the mammoth swine, which I guess he felt scared of because he didn't want to get scalded in this situation. But and I also gave him a generator. What, what was I thinking in that moment? I guess I guess I really didn't want him to calm mind up. But I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Uh, I am able to scald directly into the slow king, which does nothing. He knew that that scald was coming, so really no surprises there. Uh, yeah, that is. I don't know what that was about. I could have gotten this thing so low just on toxic damage alone. But regardless, we're, we're okay. I let him get a scald off on me. I try to tell him again. What am I doing? Dude, what am I doing? Why am I doing that? And I let in the Noggin Adele. I'm giving the Noggin Adele free ass beast moves. What am I doing? This is bananas. All right. All right. Seriously, what am I doing? Like, that's the freest beast piece of his career. Alright. So. I left the Slow King at full, but it's still toxic, I guess, so that's a thing. Um. I know that my Type Null is still going to be able to take a hit at plus one from this, uh. Not going to I'm, I'm pretty positive that I built this Type Null specifically to take a hit. I, I'm, I, I'm remembering this in chunks now. I believe I did build this type null specifically to be able to take a sludge wave at plus one. It, uh, just to stop this thing from getting out of hand. But I knew he's going to want to switch out the way he did before. So I just U-turned out uh, into um, my T'Challa. Uh, the slow king is still a problem because I left it at full. Oh, I gave it I gave it regenerator twice. Twice. I can't even say that I forgot at that point. All right. Regardless... Uh, Dark Pulse is my best move to go for. He's probably built special lead offensive enough to take at least one, but, uh, that brings him down super low. So, I, also, I guess, um, part of my thinking was that, uh, oh, I, and, and he also did reveal the signal beam earlier, so it probably wasn't the best move to go for, regardless, but, uh, I do get the flinch, which does bail me out quite a bit there. Um, the wild thing is, <laughs> he does switch out. To keep it. No, the wild thing is that uh, Dark Balls probably only did that only did that much because he was pretty darn uh, offensive with his call mine nonsense. But uh, I did get a very free U-turn off because uh, whether he stayed in or he switched out, U-turn was very free in that moment. Uh, it does a very decent amount to the tank growth, and I believe that that should reveal a solve vest. I would be very surprised if that did that much to a. Uh, to a physically defensive tank growth but uh it does allow me to go into my electros and uh do something i u-turn again yeah i think once i realized that uh it was probably self vested that i figured that u-turn would be the best play in this situation and it covers against him switching so it does allow me to u-turn into uh this thing i think if anything i just wanted to prevent him from earthquaking maybe i guess so that i could bring in my greninja my uh inferno pretty freely but regardless he's gonna switch out he's gonna it's gonna uh bait in the diancy as um i am scarfed i will say i'm almost positive that i'm scarfed and it doesn't allow me to u-turn once again uh, i guess i i guess i'm thinking that the u-turn is pretty free at this point and uh this is one of these teams okay so i really did have a lot of fun um with this team overall even though i did inherit it uh um but when i made my changes almost every one of my mons uh had access to u-turns so i would and I made a, I made a pledge to myself that if I brought, if I had a match where all six of my mons could learn U-turn, that I would, that all six of my mons to, in any given week would pack U-turn on them. So I had a lot of fun just U-turning for no reason, just because U-turning is fun. Um, but uh, this is where he reveals that he's protect. So I don't know, possibly a situation where he's trying to uh, protect to uh, get more poison damage off on me, and possibly just scouting off as well. But 
I'm, I'm reasonably sure that I would read... No, okay. Uh, well, okay, maybe this is a read. I was gonna say, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I would read, um, his protect as him wanting to scout for a, an effective switch, which would let me U-turn, but, uh, I guess I must have predicted this thing to come in because I ice beam pretty aggressively into it, and, uh, it, I do, it, it does do me okay, but, uh, it does allow me to get a very free U-turn and take out the tank growth. So, uh, being able to use Hearn pretty freely is helping me out quite a bit, and, uh, I did know that I was going to be able to take one la one final round of Life Orb damage, so I do get one final hit off with my T'Challa, as long as, as long as I don't use Hearn into it, like an idiot, but I probably will, because I don't even know. Um, but this is going to allow his Naga to Del in, and, oh, he's, he, he's a Z-move Naga to Del, which is going to pretty much guarantee that he gets, gets a very free beast boost in the situation. Uh, now once again, I did build my Type Null very specifically to, to try to be able to deal with this Naga Del, even at plus one. But, um, at this point, <coughs> I'm not going to, he, he's already built a, a lot of dents into my team. So, now we're playing some mind games where I'm not even sure whether, he, he might want to give up the Naga Del. Who knows at this point? Because, uh, my Type Null is always going to be a constant annoyance to his Naga Del. Um... And he does have Dianski in the back, which can potentially do a lot. But he does end up uh, switching out. I might even click Iron Head in this situation. Just yeah, okay. I did expect I did expect these mind games, so I did expect them to, to want to stay in potentially. But uh, I do get an, an Iron Head off on the Mammoth Swine, or maybe at this point he's so low on Mons that I feel like even if he yeah no Iron Head covers whatever he wants to do because if he wants to stay in, I take it out, and if he wants to switch into what into into either one, I get at least times two super effective damage um but i do fodder off my greninja yeah i guess because my uh greninja gets reasonably taken out to uh ice heart anyway so and uh I, and i should get outsmit by not gonna del i'm pretty sure um but this does allow me to bring in my infernape and my infernape can to get a close combat off doesn't even go for the ice shard it, Honestly, probably wasn't even worth it. He probably was just playing off me, choking on me, like over predicting with a U turn or some kind of nonsense like that. Um, that's probably a much more reasonable play than just going than just getting some damage off with Ice Shard. But this does allow him to bring in his Diancy, and um, at this point, I'm thinking that I have to switch out because my only chance of winning is I don't know what I think my only chance of winning is. But, um, I go into my Type Null to, oh, because by him going into his, into his Diancy, my thinking is that, um, if I can go into my Type Null and I can take this thing out with Type Null, I, it, in my head, I put him, him in a position where he kind of choked this match away because by going into Type Null, or sorry, by going into Diancy, that allow that gives Type Null an opening to potentially win this match in the end game, and uh, then, or at the very least, take take out this Diancy in the end game, and then that opens up my uh, Infernape to be able to take out the uh, Nagana Del and win. But he realizes uh, whatever mistake or whatever strategy he had going on, and he knows now that uh, he can. He's in a position where he can potentially beat me. So now, in my head, I'm thinking, the only way that I win in this endgame is to try to encore him into Protect so that my Type Null, because at this point now, um, I allowed my Type Null to get weakened so much through turns of, um, through turns of, uh, Toxic and, like, with the Protect and all these nonsense that now my Type Null is, um, now my Type Null is weak enough where I don't take a hit from this thing, and that's gonna hurt me. And you can see, I end up taking an Earth Power, but this is the only situation where he, where he would go for an Earth Power against my Type Null. Normally, he would just go for a Moon Blast or a Power Gem or whatever the heck. But, um, in my head, I'm thinking that I had to be able to go back into my uh, Infernape. And uh, I put myself in, a, in another really uh, terrible position because... You, you guys saw that I felt like my only path to victory was to try to encore him into into uh, rock polish but magic bounce just bounces back the, the encore so 
that was an interaction that I completely forgotten about. If I just clicked close combat, then I don't know, maybe I crit and I win. But there were so many things going on in that end game that, uh, honestly, I couldn't even talk over half of it. But again, in my head, by him going into Diancy, that was a bit of a throw because uh, that allows my Type Null to potentially deal with the Diancy with an Iron Head. And then that opens up the door for my Infernape to deal with the Nagana Dell because it is scarped and it's low enough where uh, a close combat takes it out. But I think he recognized that he 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 protects, lets my Type Null take uh, take poison damage, goes back out into his Nagana Dell uh, to be able to uh, whittle down my Type Null even more, and uh, and that ultimately puts me in a position where. I have to play switch games in order to stay ahead, stay turn ahead of him. And then once I got the idea where, oh, Scarfed Encore is my one final uh, gambit here. Because if I can Encore him into, into Protect or into um, or in, into Rock Polish, which he ended up going for, then that's my only path to victory. But I completely forgot the interaction where Encore gets bounced back through Magic Bounds. And uh, that was a pretty dumb moment for me. But... If I had done all that to get back into my Infernape and potentially just gone for a close combat, then I potentially crit and uh, that was my path to victory. I feel like I'm, I'm just repeating myself, but uh, there's just so much going on in that endgame that even me watching this bag, it was hard for me to process everything that was happening. So hopefully uh, that was clear for anybody watching, but ultimately that's how my ICDA season four is going to end with uh, two back-to-back -back losses uh, that had me, uh, again, pretty low I've, i was pretty i was feeling pretty bad about that especially after uh i got six out on showdown to an illegal z move my final two weeks of the season ended up being forfeit wins which ultimately ended up uh giving me a playoff seed and uh i will try my best to get in that uh playoff run out and then uh that'll be a bow on icba season four and from there uh, like I said, within a week or two will be the start of ICB Season 5. I like my team a lot. Uh, my team is a little bit of a mess, but uh, still a very fun mess. And I am pretty excited to see whatever the heck it does, whether it's a mess or not. Um, but once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like I said, we'll be back with more ICBA for, for sure. And uh, more weeks to the APA, more weeks to the MPL. I am really hoping to make a playoff run in both I'm in as good a position as I can be at this point. And uh, with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And everyone, once again, out.